Hello everyone. In this YouTube I'd like to add to the first one about colour mixing in which we mixed a spectrum colour wheel like this only not as neatly because it's not necessary if you're creating a palette to paint from doesn't have to be the masterpiece. So this is what I mixed for you in that first YouTube. Now this is just mixed from primary colours of red, yellow and blue only. And we've got this beautiful range of colour which I then reduced with white on the outside. Now in this YouTube I'd like to show you the value of using complementary colours. This chart shows the, the first row that I mixed last time, the spectrum colour wheel here. This time it's reduced with white on the inside of the ring. That's the only difference. Now the outer ring here is created by mixing a little of each into its opposite. Just a tiny touch of it mixed into its opposite and these are the colours you will get. Now there's many more of them you'll get a whole range in between any two. Red to green will give you a beautiful range and it's quite possible and often uh, used by many artists actually as a means towards colour harmony to use one simple range mixed from two opposites on the colour wheel only reduced with white. So that's what I'd like to show you today the possibilities of doing this. But in simplistic terms, if you simply need, uh, for instance, if you're painting an, a red apple and you want to put a shadow on that red apple, you mix a little of the opposite on the wheel into it to get the shadow colour. Understand? So this beautiful range of subtle colours, in effect, become a mixture of all three primaries in different amounts. So that's where the subtlety comes in. Okay, so let's get cracking. Now, I've laid out here the three primary colours of red, blue and yellow and they're opposites on the colour wheel, on the spectrum colour wheel. Whatever colour lies opposite them, I've placed at the bottom. Now I'll take the lighter of the two colours in each case because a tiny bit of the darker of the colours will be needed to alter the, its opposite. So always mix dark into light gradually. That's the golden rule of of mixing and reaching for tints. So the green here is the lighter of the red and green so I'm going to leave a little bit behind and lay it out in just several swatches in between to give you an idea of what will happen when I alter them. So here we go, I take some red, not too much see how we go with that. You just have to feel for these colours. Add it gradually and see what happens. Now see how the green has altered that red into more of a brick colour. Very subtle. It's taken the, um, the sting out of that bright colour and just mellowed it. Now, whatever is left on my painting knife here, which has a raised handle, by the way, so I don't get my knuckles in the paint, so I always use it that way up. Um, so whatever's left on there from this mix, I shall mix into the next lot, which has slightly more green in it. And we get a beautiful shade in between the red and the green here. Now once again, keep going into the third swatch. Mix whatever's left on your knife. There's usually enough. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. So that's the secret 
of reaching for these beautiful colours. Now look at these lovely subtle colours in between the primaries. Just wiping my knife clean over here. Now I'm going to reduce them with white so that you can see them more clearly. A little bit of white into the side of each over here. It's quite difficult to show you without getting my person in the way. <laughs> so I've learned to do this upside down. So there's a lovely subtle pink. Wiping the knife clean each time so that you have a lovely clean mix. Look at this beautiful neutral colour now. Look. Oh, look, it's a warm beige. And of course you can lighten as many times as you wish and go gently from one tint to the next. A little white into the third one. Not quite enough, a little bit more. You can always add more. Can't take it out, so add always add gradually. So there's three beautiful tints in between there and of course you can also add white to the pure colours at either end and you have a beautiful range that is harmonious. And to the green at the bottom, lovely light green. Now I've done many paintings that require colour harmony with just one simple range like this because it gives me warms, cools, darks and lights and that's all I need uh, in order to create an illusion on a flat surface <laughs> which is what we do as magicians artists are magicians you know now here we go, I'll do this second row now the orange is the lighter of the two so I lay it towards the blue in lessening amounts. Okay, now I take some, always wipe my knife between, take some blue, not too much because the dark colours are very very strong doesn't take much to alter them. Now let's see what happens here. Oh, we've got a beautiful shade. Sort of a blue-green there. When I add the white later you'll see it better. Okay, whatever's left on my knife into the next one. Because there's more orange in laid out in the first place it will change that tint. Here we go, we're getting some olive greens here. Whatever's left on my knife once again. Mix it into the third one. And see how it's taken the strength out of the orange and made it into a beautiful subtle colour. This is a very useful range for many, many landscapes. Reducing with white now on the side. Oh, lovely colour. Beautiful. I just love mixing colour. It's just the most magical thing. If ever I want to de-stress, I just put out the primaries and mix. <laughs> you might like to try that too. Okay, here's beautiful colouring in this gorgeous soft greyish blue and of course you can add the white to the original blue which is in this case thalo blue but often I'm, I use French ultramarine or cerulean depending on what the painting requires because every every primary colour you put out will alter the result. There are many different reds, many different blues, many different yellows. 
there we are. Now look at this beautiful colour harmony happening here. Once again, you can create a whole painting with only that range. It's giving you the warms, the cools, the lights and the darks. And here we go, the last one now. Which is the lighter of the two? The yellow, of course. So leave a bit behind. Lay it out towards the purple in lessening amounts. A bit less off that one to make it tapering in, in amount. Now, here we go. Some purple. I've spread it out with my finger here at the bottom so you can see the tint because it's very dark. Okay, now a lot into the first lot. This is a beautiful sunsetty sort of range. I've done seascapes in this colour range and it's so unusual and so beautiful. Here we go. Notice I'm not picking up any more purple, I'm just using what's on my knife each time. Is enough to alter the tint. Look at that, we're getting into almost a yellow ochre from that lemon by adding the purple. When you do this you will discover many colours that perhaps you have bought on their own in the tube. But it's nice to know how to mix them whether you buy them that way or not because you will understand how to use colour harmony using complementary colours. There's a lovely tint there. I'm just reducing each with white once again. It's very hard to do all this and keep the YouTube nice and short for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a lovely neutral. Paintings that lack these subtle colours just lose something in my mind. It shows that the artist has control and is using all the tools that are at your disposal. To my mind, to have one of these ranges already mixed on my palette when I start, it's almost like sitting down at a piano and having the keys already there to play. Otherwise, I'm, I'm flying blind. So here we have a beautiful range. Isn't it lovely? Imagine a whole painting done with this. You will find them on my website actually, and some paintings that I have done from each of these ranges, and that's artintegrity.wordpress.com. Okay, so there.